We have all seen them. They're everywhere. The bro vets, the vet bros. The grunt style shirts, nothing wrong with that, but the really loud ones, you know what I'm talking about. There's a big difference. Tactical pants, tactical everything, tactical underpants, tactical cowboy hat, <laughs> tactical whatever. <laughs> Lots of tactical tacticalness. Probably a goatee, Oakley's, you know. We've seen them. They're the ones that like to, to, to start most every argument, especially on Facebook with, well, as a combat veteran, dot, 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 or as a veteran, dot, 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 I believe blank. And they're like arguing about something completely unrelated. The pro vet. We've seen them. Is that stereotype deserved? Is it a good stereotype? Is it a bad stereotype? Is it offensive? I don't really care. Uh, it's funny. So we're going to be doing, you might be a vet bro. If I may get myself into trouble, I got like a laundry list of disclaimers before I dive into this. But look, if we can't laugh at ourselves, then who can we laugh at? Who, who are we allowed to laugh at? You know, come on people. I check a lot of these boxes myself. You think I don't own a shirt from a veteran t-shirt company that's got a flag on the arm? Of course I do. The first time, the, the second I sewed on staff sergeant, I went out and bought a new car. And a loud one, too. I check a lot of these boxes myself. So this is really me looking in the mirror. We're laughing at ourselves. We're having a good time. There are some less funny less cosmetic underlying issues that are not a feather in the vet pro vet bro community's cap however which we need to talk about these vet vet bro tendencies i would argue that vet broitude is is more so on a spectrum than it is a yes or no black or white it's not like are you a vet bro or not it's like to what extent are you a bro vet? We're going to find out. Stay tuned. Hey, please throw your comments in. No matter what platform you're watching on, I'm live right now on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitch. I'm going to try to get to them. Uh, I had posited the the whole, like, you might be a vet bro if thing earlier in the week and got like over 100 comments. Uh, so I'm going to try to get to all of them. Uh, which platform is going to get the first comment award on today's stream? I don't know. We're going to find out. But first, I need to dive in into a couple disclaimers. Keep my, my death threats this week to a minimum. Golly, I'll get so butthurt. So butthurt. I am the first person to defend our community against stereotyping, against categorization, because we are a diverse community, but there are common threads and there are things that are prevalent and they're worth exploring. Some of them are comical because we've all seen it and we've all done it. Something we have in common. Let's laugh about it. If any of the things that I'm listing listing off here, like if I say you might be a bro vet if blank, and the thing that I list is something that makes you happy, don't stop doing that. Don't sell your Dodge Challenger. Don't stop wearing grunt style shirts. Take pride in your service. And if you like it, you like it. Look, reintegration is tough enough as it is. All right. It, it, it really is. So... Let's just have a laugh and move on. Nobody's judging you, okay? I feel like I'm really trying to soften this and <laughs> pad this. There are a lot of people on the front end that were already posting like, I, I'm confused by this. Why would you disparage the veteran community? 
we all have these common threads. Some of us are just a little extra about it, and it's worth a giggle, that's all. Not making fun of your nostalgia or your inside jokes or your service. Somebody even came out and said, like, this is clearly a dig on Vietnam veterans. Haven't we been through enough? What? Where on earth did you get that from? Are you a Vietnam veteran that checks all those brovet boxes? Okay. My dad's a Vietnam veteran. He doesn't wear grunt style. I don't even think he knows what grunt style is. I'm not a dig on, but why would I dig on Vietnam veterans? You got to be kidding me. The butt hurt is strong with people. An important point, something I saw on Twitter last week as I was doing some research for this, is some argue that failure to adapt goes both ways. You know, you join the military, you're in basic training, and if you fail to adapt, they send you home. You know, if you if you cannot hang in military life, you get failure to adapt and you're out, right? Some argue that failure to adapt when you reintegrate should go that way. If you're four years into your post-service civilian career and you're still way too extra as a military person, they should send you back. Failure to adapt as a civilian, you got to go back to being a military member. I thought it was funny, but I don't agree with that. All right, we like what we like. And a lot of these veteran-owned companies and veteran-owned gear and veteran-owned stuff and t-shirts and coffee and hats and luggage, whatever, they're very charitable and very supportive of the veteran community. And that's a good thing. I would never try to like, I mentioned grunt style, but like, I would never try to take money out. That's a veteran. That's a veteran owned company done good. Like I would never try to take money out of their pocket or disparage them. This isn't about that. All right. Is everybody good? Everybody's all right. Can I go on to the, you might be a vet bro if, and we can just keep the butt hurt to a minute. Golly. All right. First one. I got to go first. You might be a vet bro. If you park in the veteran parking only spot at Lowe's, even though you saw an open space much closer to the door, nothing wrong with parking in those parking spots. But if you park in one of those spots intentionally, when there's a much closer spot available, you might, you might be a vet bro. Might be. Especially if you parked in that spot in your lime green Dodge Challenger that's financed at 26 APR. <laughs> Justin, hey, Justin chimes in from LinkedIn, which means LinkedIn gets the first comment award for the day. Yay! Ouch. My shirt is a flag in the sleeve right now, but we all need some fun poke ourselves. Can't take yourself that seriously in life. Like what you like and remember to laugh at your own shenanigans. You know what, Justin? I couldn't have said it better myself, my friend. You nailed it. I should have had you on the front end. I was rambling trying to soften the whole thing. But yeah, we're just having a good laugh. And so there's some great comments on this thread. I'm going to try to get to, to, uh, to as many as I can. Michael says, well, how many? He replied, how many E2s go to Lowe's, though? Uh -huh. It was not just E2s buying lime green Dodge Challengers. And Paul added that the 26% APR is accurate, but only if it's a V6 model with over 100,000 miles. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And the other one for me was if you pick fights with strangers on Facebook and start every completely unrelated point with as a veteran or as a combat veteran, you might be a bro vet. From Casey Lawrence, he says, uh, you might be a bro vet if you own and wear multiple grunt style shirts. Start out your intro with I'm a vet, drive a Toyota Tacoma that's tan on black with the awesome blacked out flag. Showcase how much black rifle coffee company uh, I'm not going to read this. You stuff you like by the amount of coffee you buy from them. Shall I go on? A lot of people really like that coffee. A lot of people really like that coffee. Uh, Moses says, if you start out your sentence with coming from a veteran's perspective with other veterans in the class, rolling their eyes, a lot of people that went to, <laughs> that went to college with, uh, with other veterans, my goodness, a lot of them are guilty of you know being the they're the only veteran in the classroom so obviously that's got to be a challenge being around a whole bunch of 18 year old kids essentially that don't know anything in the world and you served and you deployed and blah 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 blah. but that does not make you a foreign policy expert it doesn't so if you pretend like you're a foreign policy expert on things even things that are happening in the middle east then you might be a bro vet Zach uh, adds, it's the equivalent of telling basic training stories because you and your first unit haven't gone anywhere yet. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, DJ says you might be a bro vet if you have at least two stickers on your vehicle signifying your branch of service, at least two pins and mini medals, medals on your hat. Ooh, who puts mini medals on their hat? Goodness, that's pretty extra. Let me know in the comments if you put mini medals on your hat. We got to have a talk. Custom license plate with the cliche sayings like devil dog or hoo on them. Yep. Or fly fight win. At least one service related tattoo larger than your hand that is easily visible in normal clothing. Dude, just at me next time. That's me. See, I check a box. I can laugh at myself. I got like my first week after basic training. I'm going to get a giant Air Force logo on my calf. So every time I'm doing PT with other Air Force people, the Air Force people know that I'm an Air Force person. It's a great idea. What a brilliant idea, Adam. High five. Bro, that. <laughs> uh, DJ also says, uh, or if you yell at the staff on November 11th for not immediately giving you the 10% discount at IHOP, like... Couldn't they tell between the bumper sticker, custom plates, ball cap with pins and metals, the Semper Fi on your knuckles and the loud proclamation of how this chow is way better than MREs in the field or the mess decks underway. They should have known that you were a vet. That's funny. But I added just calling food chow at all in the first place puts you uh, gives you a point in the bro vet category. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Elizabeth says, if you regularly tell people how to be a real man while saying I could have been in insert special operations of choice if I wanted. Yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are like, I wasn't in special forces, but I worked with them all the time when I worked alongside special forces. If you say that, you might be a bro vet. Uh, Elizabeth adds bonus brovet points if they're drinking a monster energy drink like it's 2008. Okay, I drink monster energy drink sometimes. The white, the sugar free white monster is like crazy good. It's even worse if you're drinking a rip it or like the dollar store equivalent of the mini rip it cans. You know exactly what I'm talking about. If anybody OE, OEF, OIF, downrange, you know what a rip it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I guess you can get rip it's at, at Dollar Tree. Jacob says, hit up Dollar Tree for the camo laced rippets. That's funny. That stuff's made out of distilled from pure gasoline, I believe. Kyle says, you may have uh, you you uh, may be a bro vet if you have more than five military stickers on your Ford F-150 lifted Super Duty. You know, a lot of people mentioned cars. I think a lot of people identify with their vehicles. But I think one of like, aside from what you're donning personally, what you're wearing, I think one of the easiest ways to distinguish yourself as a vet bro or a bro vet is, is with your vehicle. And Joshua adds, can't forget the truck nuts. I hate truck nuts. That's definitely a bro vet move. But dude, if, if I was running for office and I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If I was running for office, my single platform would be banning of truck nuts. I hate them. I'm not a fan of truck nuts. There's something about them that just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, that would be my single platform. Somebody mentioned I can't get past the I had shared a meme that was like the you're you're welcome for my service starter pack with your instead of your. Yeah, it's part as part of the joke. Come on, man. All right. Somebody mentioned 5.11 pants. I have no idea what that is. Maybe I need to up, upgrade my tactical pants game. 511 pants. <laughs> Gary's like, I'm rapidly removing my cargo pants and boots. He's wearing cac Cole's polo instead of a 511 polo. He's admitting to being a bro vet. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. I like you just the way you are. You be you, man. You be you. Benjamin says your tactical backpack that you carry everywhere has extra Velcro sewn on for all of your, for all 50 of your morale patches to be displayed at once. I have a camo backpack that's got my name tape on it, but that's about it. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of check that box. Jacob says you might be a bro vet if your vehicle is plastered with bumper stickers and decals showing your rank basis served service medals and dependas rank. Whew. Brutal. Depend a rank. My goodness. And Lee added, maybe you shouldn't throw around a word like that in a public professional space that includes military spouses. 
use of toxic stereotypes is more brovet than all the coyote tan accessories, grunt style tees and beards combined. Okay. All right, man. <laughs> we're, we're clearly tongue in cheek here. It's not a toxic stereotype. I'm going to talk about this, the toxic side of being a bro vet at the end. Lee, if you're watching, we can have a dialogue about that. Hang in there. If you have the Oakley sunglasses with the global war on terror ribbon along the side, like the GWAT, whew, you might be a bro vet. Uh, you regularly wear Navy SEAL diving shorts and you weren't even in the Navy or any branch and you can't swim. <laughs> that's from Bob Mahler. Yeah, that's I would be I would be showing a lot of thigh, a lot of big pasty thigh in that. I wouldn't I wouldn't subject anybody to that, really. <laughs> oh, Wes says they're called Ranger panties. All right. I didn't even know. Uh, Zechariah says you feel that you may be a bro vet if you feel the need to quantify your change in physique. And I added, yeah, if you call any kind of exercising or going to the gym PT or pretty much use acronyms for anything, you might be a bro vet. My buddy Cody, who I went to high school with, who was not a service member, but is a longstanding police officer uh, back in my hometown now has had a very successful and storied career. Uh, thank you for your service, uh, Cody. He says, have you been looking in my closet? Non-vet, but this is me. See, you can be an honorary bro vet. Jacob says, if you ask for military discounts at your local McDonald's, I don't think that makes you a bro vet. Asking for discounts. I'm a big fan. Like, you earn that. Getting in somebody's chili because they don't have a military discount? That is a bro vet move. You're not going to give me 15 cents off of my coffee. Do you really care about my service? Lame. Bro vet. Check mark. But I don't think asking for a discount is like, I love saving money. Michelle says, why bro vet? I thought we were all brethren. Fair point. I actually had somebody reach out to me and say, you know, there is a female version of the bro vet. And, and she told me the like the rundown of like what it is. And what she's seen. And I said, I'm not going to talk about that. Because I think it would come off the wrong way coming from me. And I don't have personal, you know, I don't, I don't have personal experience with it, you know. Uh, and this is probably, you know, already with the comments. I'm already getting enough trouble <laughs> as it is. Uh Christopher says, you might be a bro, but if you do everything to look like you're still in and then get upset when people notice. Wow. Jeremiah says, you might be an inspiring LinkedIn influencer if you post seemingly controversial posts like this. Good one. <laughs> people. You got me. Jonathan says, where's all the hate coming from? Just curious. It's no hate. Literally no hate. Andrew says, uh, I have the hat and some grunt style clothing. If I grow a beard, I look like Santa Claus. So no beard for now. Michelle says, if you routinely just cut in front of the women at the VA because you're confused as to why we might be there, you might be a bro vet. Michelle, that's a good one. Really good. Michelle's a buddy of mine. We've been connected for a long time. It's a really good one. And then uh, Lauren adds, uh, I walk in like I own the place. However, I get funny looks if I wear a dress and no one asks what unit I was in, but they'll ask the dude next to me. I never thought about that before. That must be very frustrating for the female service members out there. Michelle says that happens all the dang time. It's infuriating. It's one of the reasons why I drive farther to go to the women's clinic. I don't, I don't think I've ever been asked about my unit now that I think about it. That's crazy. Guys will sit down and ask that to, to other dudes, but just assume that a female is a spouse. It's lame. If you assume a female is a spouse, that is vet bro move. Bro vet. More stuff about cars. 
more stuff about cars. Everybody's, yeah, I guess the car, the car is the best way to display that you're a brunette. <laughs> oh, man, just a lot of comments of people that are getting butt hurt. Let's see, you're the person telling, uh, from Thomas, you're the person telling other people online and in person that your very narrow definition of just about anything is the only way to believe things. Be a man or be an American. Yeah, if you, th if you think you have uh, a monopoly on what patriotism is because you served, and you talk like you represent all veterans, you might be a brovet. That's kind of more in the later category, the not funny brovet stuff we're going to get into shortly. Hmm. Some of these comments are ridiculous. My goodness. Brian says you have the entire contents of your DD-214 along with every unit you served in on the rear windshield of your car. Probably a truck. The icing on the cake is all of that plus a thin blue line sticker and a Punisher logo. Zach says you own a Traeger pellet grill and or a Yeti cooler. I actually aspire to own a Traeger pellet grill. So I'm like an aspiring vet bro, if that's true. <laughs> oh, Kelly, that's a good one. If you challenge others parked in the veteran parking at Lowe's, if you're the vet police, what are you doing parked there? When did you serve? And piggybacking on what Michelle said. If you challenge other people parked in veteran parking spots at Lowe's, and you're more likely to do so if they're female, you are a bro vet. That's a good one, Kelly. That may be the best one. Thank you for your, thank you for putting that in there. That was a real good one. Nathan says, if you think civilians owe you anything, I'm going to get to that in a minute, but good one. Hmm. Charles says, you might be a bro vet when you meet another bro or sis vet. And you know they'll understand you. And you can speak pretty much entirely in acronyms. I like it. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you tuning in, my man. Well, we got a couple good supportive comments in here, so that's good. Some funny stuff. Ronald says, if you drop down and do 50 push-ups first thing in the morning, you might be a bro vet. I think this is just being healthy. Yeah, I think it's just being healthy. I think really the opposite, though. I think brovats are the ones that have let their PT go off, which is a lot of us, but still dress and act like they're, you know, like they're still, uh, you know, you know. Let's see, what we got Michael chimed in. Chuck Freeberg, well said. You know what, uh, Michael, I don't see the comment that you're talking about here. Truck, Chuck Freeberg, well said. Let me take a look. Um, yeah, that was well said. If anybody reads on this thread from here on LinkedIn, Chuck Freeberg had a really good, uh, had a really good comment on there. Luke said you're going to get blasted for this one, but I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So that's the, that's the funny, the funny, you might be a vet bro or bro vet if stuff. And if you have any other thoughts, if I left anything out, you know, it's like I said, it's tongue in cheek. It's very based on how you dress, what you wear, how you carry yourself. Uh, the car you drive, I guess, is a big identifier. <laughs> Brian says you might be a bro vet if you name your kayak or canoe. The USS, your last name. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Jason says, man, this is taking me back some years. That's good, man, because that's the point of this. You know, not, not to disparage anybody. So I appreciate those of you that are watching in good spirits and being good sports about it. Like I said, I check a lot of these boxes myself. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention the other side of this coin. Because there are some things that are toxic about this community. And again, being a vet bro, it's not an on or off switch. It's not a yes or no. You're not a bro vet, whatever that means, or a basic vet, whatever. You're not a nice vet or a bad vet, a good vet or a bad vet. 
you know, it's a spectrum. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think exists somewhere on the spectrum. And there's a little needle that goes across, you know, as is true with most things. It's true. You're on the spectrum somewhere at all times. Um, there are some things that are common threads in the community that are not feathers in our cap. Like I said earlier, something that if you do these sort of things, that would lead somebody to say, oh, basic vet, bro vet, and roll their eyes and think negatively about our whole community. People can't help but stereotype. It's in their nature. And it makes everybody look bad. Uh, Kelly's comment earlier that if you challenge other veterans in the parking lot at Lowe's, you know, we see your DD 214. Did you really serve? It's a great comment. It's a great addition. But there's some stuff behind that. Being the veteran police. And one giant bro vet move is the playing the who is more of a veteran game. That junk. That drives me nuts. Oh, you, you were in the National Guard? I was active duty. I'm more of a vet than you. Oh, you were active duty and served stateside? Well, I deployed. I'm more of a vet than, than you are. My opinion's more valid. Oh, you were deployed but didn't see combat? I deployed. I'm a combat veteran. My opinion's greater than. Oh, I was special forces. I'm more of a veteran than you. Everybody that served, served in their own way. And if you do that, if you have that hierarchy in your brain, especially if you're like in some Facebook book argument. Yeah, well, I deployed. So clearly I'm a foreign policy expert on anything. You were in the National Guard. What would you know? That stuff drives me nuts. And that is a nasty bro vet move. That's the not funny end of things. Looking down on civilians. Like they wouldn't know a thing. Is a bro vet move. If they're talking about veterans and the veteran community and military families, they're talking about what it's like to be in the military or what veterans should think or feel, feel free to set them straight. Nothing wrong with that. But you're not better than they are at everything. You don't know everything. It doesn't put you in this higher echelon. It just is a different basis of experience. That's a, that's a not funny bro vet thing. Talking like you represent all veterans is a bro vet move. I feel X politically. So clearly all veterans think this. Me and all of my vet buddies think this. So clearly the military or veteran community is aligned on this political side. Yeah, of course you feel the way that you do. And of course your friends do. You're probably aligned because you're probably friends because you're aligned. In all of those things. You're in an echo chamber. We all pick these, these, these echo chambers. So like talking like you're not the emperor of veterans and you and your veteran friend group. You're not like you don't speak for all of us. The veteran community is too diverse to make sweeping statements about. It's not wise. It's not accurate. So if you talk like you represent all veterans, that's a bro vet move. No good. You got some good comments. Brian says a lot of luck slash unlock of the draw of which orders you receive. Absolutely. I, would you say that the cook is less of a veteran than the cook inside the wire is, is less of a veteran than the, than the convoyer outside the wire? Who fueled that, that, that soldier, that airman, that Marine up? And took care of them when they got back. I mean, they, everybody served in their own way. So absolutely, it is luck of the draw. Some people want to, want to deploy and their number doesn't get called. They're not less of a veteran. Raymond joining in from YouTube, he says, does wearing a boonie cover while wearing Oakley M frames when driving a tractor count as a bro vet asking for a friend? <laughs> no. no, I think that makes you awesome. I wear my boonie cover uh, when I go camping. Yeah, I still I can't I can't bring myself to throw it away. It is a relic of a lost age. So, yeah, no judgment here. No way. Steven says, man, I work in higher ed and this is such a salient conversation. 
Michael says, yeah, we are all like a puzzle. Everyone has their part. Well said, Michael. Good to see you again, my friend. Yeah, talking like you represent all veterans. <laughs> drives me nuts. That's bad, bro, that thing. Finally, I'll say entitlement. If you think that people owe you something, a job, a discount, a monetary compensation of some kind, reverence, respect, promotions. If you think you're owed that because of your service, that is like 10 check marks in the brovet category. You might be a brovet if, if you are entitled. You think your opinion is more valid and you talk down to other people. You're judgy. That's bro vet stuff. That's the real bro vet stuff. The other cosmetic stuff is just funny. It's things we have in common. And like I said, I'm the first person to defend our community against sweeping statements and stereotypes, okay? And that really is the point of this. You know, I, I consider this kind of a little bit of a bait and switch, I suppose. We started talking about the funny stuff and then I switched it on you. And now I'm talking about some of the serious issues in our community. And if you don't think entitlement in the veteran community or that arrogance or that ego is an issue in the veteran community, you may need to look in the mirror. Maybe. Because it's a problem, man. It's huge. Kelly says, well said, the entitlement is out of hand. Go prove yourself. Earn your pro-service success. You betcha. Well said. Kelly, man, you're on fire. I appreciate all your comments. Appreciate all your comments. I appreciate all of your comments. All of you have some very, 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 very good thoughts and input. And nobody came after me. Nobody came for the, nobody came for my throat yet. Oh, I'll have to check my email. <sighs> Last time I had very real conversation about, you know, something that was not positive. In the veteran community, I got a lengthy email from somebody saying I was, you know, disparaging the veteran community. And, you know, I would say I, the veteran community, they're my people. I love you. But when you love something enough, you're honest with it. I have stuff to work on. We as a community have stuff to work on, stuff we can get better. I love all of you. I think you're awesome. But I think we need to self-reflect objectively and improve together. And I don't think I'm the only person seeing this, this stuff. Kelly, Kelly himself, just there, he just said, entitlement is out of hand. A couple other people commented about entitlement too. It's a problem. So let me leave you with this thought. How do we improve it? Does it take us kind of tongue-in-cheek calling out? these behaviors, these mentalities in our community? Is that what it's going to take? How do we, how do we work on that? Does it take education while in service? I don't think we need to cure Oakley's and goatees and grunt style shirts and rippets. I don't give a crap about any of that, but we do need to work on the entitlement issue and the infighting and the who's more of a veteran stuff and the looking down on civilians and talking like you represent all of us, we do need to work on that as a community. So how do we do it? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Send me a, send me an email or DM. Maybe that's something we can talk about on a later show. Y'all have been great. Fantastic. Have yourself a great weekend. <laughs> I'm full of ego, please, 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 I'm full of ego, please,